Hi, welcome to the Holes of Mark podcast show, and today I am doing The Reader's Image by Stephen King. He moved it last year, and quite an operation it was too, Mr. Catlin said as they mounted the stairs. Had to move it by hand, of course. No other way, he assured it against accident. We always before we even took it out of the case in the drawing room. Only found it that would ensure for the sum we had in mind. Spangler said nothing. The man was a fool. Johnny Spangler had learned a long time ago that the only way to talk to a fool was to annoy him. He showed it for a quarter of a million dollars. Mr. Catlin resumed when he reached the second floor, landing his mouth quirked in a half bitter, half humorous line. A pretty penny of cars, too. He was a little man, not quite fat, with rimless glasses and a tanned bald head that shone like a varnished volleyball. A suit of armour, guarding the monogly shadows of the second floor corridor, stared at him impassively. He's a long carrier, corridor. As Bangler eyed the walls and hangings with a cool professional eye, Samuel Coglet had brought in copious qualities, but had no doubt but he had but brought well, like so many of the self made industry emperors of the late eighteen hundreds, he had been a little more than a pawn shop router, masquerading in collector's clothing, a connoisseur, car canvases, monstrosities, trashy novels, poetry collections, expensive cobweb buildings, atrocious pieces of art, sculpture, all which he considered art. Up here the walls were hung. The soon was perhaps a better word. With imitation welcome drapes, num, 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 numberless, and no doubt anonymous, Madonna's her, holding out numerous hollowed babies, while numerous angels flitted hither and thither in the background, grotesque, scrolled candelabra, candelabra and rum, monstrous and of seasoning of nate candelabra, Surmounted by severity, grinning nymphette. Of course, the old poet had come up with a few interesting items. No averages that might did it. And if Samuel Cruggett, Memorial Private Museum, got the tours on the hour, a vision, one dollar, adults, five, fifty cents, children, nauseating, was ninety cent percent blatant junk. It was always the other two percent things, like the coon's long rifle. Over the heath in the kitchen and a small little camera skewing in the parlour, one of cool. And of course, the, the deputy that deliverer looking glass was removed from downstairs after a rather unfortunate incident, Mr. Grannon said, patrolly, abruptly motivated, apparently, by the ghastly, glaring portrait of, of no one in particular at the base of the next staircase. It'd been others. Ash words, wild words, wild statements. This is an attempt to actually destroy the mirror. The woman and Miss Sandra Bates came in with a rock in a bucket. Fortunately, rain was bad. I only cracked a mid corner of the case. The mirror was unharmed. A Bates kid had a brother. No need to give me that dollar to her, Spencer said quietly. I can tell for the history of the day of the glass. Fascinating, isn't it? Colonel Clarence cast him an odd, bleak look. You know, that dad was an English duchess in 1709 and in the Pennsylvania rug market, market but in 1746, not to mention. I can tell for the history. Spangler repeated quietly. It's a matter that I'm interested in. Of course, there's a question of authenticity. Authenticity? Mr. Catlin chuckled a dry sound, and but his, bone, his bones are stirred in the cupboard below the stairs. If it had been examined by experts, Mr. Strangler, there was a limit, limit Stratovarius. So true, Mr. Catlin said with a sign, but no Stratovarius ever had a quite, and a certain effect of a diva glance. Very quiet. Yes, quite, Spangler said in his softer, softly contemptuous voice. He understood now that there would be no stopping Gatlin. He had a, he had a mind which was perfectly in tune with the age. Quite, quite, they climbed the third. 
and fall flight flights in silence. As they drew closer to the roof of the rambling structure, it became perfectly hot in the dark upper galleries where the heat came a creeping stench from Spagdal and New Well. It, he spent all his ever life working in it. The smell of dead flies and shadowy corners, a wet rot of cloy, creeping wood lights behind the plaster. The smell of age, it was a very, it was a smell common, only to museum of loser names. He imagined where the same smell might arise from the grave of a virginal young girl, forty years dead, up here. Relics of power held a skelter in true trunk of provision. Mr. Catley led Spagler through a maze of stationary frames, splintered portraits, pompous, papyrus gold plated bird cages, a disembodied skeleton, and each in tandem bicycle. He led into the floor, far wall, where a statler had been set up beneath a trap door in the ceiling. A dusty paddock hung from the trap. Off to the left, as it imitated Adios, stared at them pitilessly, a blank pupil's eyes, pupil's eyes. One arm was outstretched, a yellow sign hung, a wisp which read, absolutely no admittance. Mr. Catley produced a key ring from his jacket pocket, selected a key and mounted the step ladder. He paused on the third rung, his bald head gleaming faintly in the shadows. I don't like this mirror said. I never did. I'm afraid to look at it. I'm afraid if I might look into it one day, you see, what the rest of them saw. They saw nothing but themselves, Stranger said. Miss Coven began to speak, stopped, shook his head and fumbled remotely above him, cranking his neck to fit the key properly into the lock. Should be should be replaced, he muttered. It's the de- down the sp- lock sprung suddenly and s- sprung out of the out of the grass. Mr. Catlin made a fumbling grab at it, and almost fell off the ladder. Spengland caught it def- definitely, definitely, and looked up to him. He was clinging, shaking to the top of the ladder, face white and brown, semi-darkness. Yeah, are you nervous about it, aren't you? Spengland said to him in a mildly wandering tone. Said in a mildly wandering tone. Mr. Catlin said nothing. He seemed paralysed. Calm down. Spangler said, please, before before you fall. Catlin descended the ladder slowly, clinging to each rung like a man tottering over a bottle of crescent. His feet touched the floor. He began to babble as if his floor contained some current. I had turned it on like electrical light. Quarter a million, he said. Quarter a million dollars worth of shots. Take that. Things from down there up to here. That goddamn thing. I had a rig some special block and tackle to get it to the gravel store store right there. I was hoping, almost praying that someone fingers that went would be slippery, that a rope might be a lot wrong test and that things might fall and be shattered in a million pieces. Facts Spangler said, Facts, Kathleen. Not cheap paperback no, novels, not cheap tabloid stories, or equally cheap horror movies. Facts. Number one. John Denver was an English craftsman of Norman descent who made mirrors in what we call the Elizabethan period of England. History. He lived and died uneventfully. Uneventfully. No pinnacles scrawled on the floor for the housekeeper to wrap out. No sofa to running documents but spots of blood and a dotted line. Number two. His mirrors have become a collector's item due to apprentice to the fine craftsmanship. And to the fact that his former crystal was used as mildly magnifying, distorting effect upon the eye of the holder, a rather distinctive dis- phrase mark. Number three, only five dealers remain in existence to our present knowledge. Two of them in America. Their price is number four. This Deva and one that was destroyed in London Blitz have gained a rather suspicious. Reputation due largely to a falsehood of exaggeration and coincidence. Fact number five, Cutlin said. You're a sub- superstitious bastard, aren't you? Spangler looked at him with mild dis- dis- detention, detention, and a blind eyed adodis.
Ah, I was glad in the tour that Sandra Brake's brother was part of when he took got a look at it in this into your previous David Mirror Spangle. He was perhaps seventeen, part of a high school group. I was going around through history of the class and just got to was going through the history of the class and you've got to the part where, where you appreciate strolling the progress, craftsmanship, perfection of the glass itself. The boy raised his hands. What about a black spot in the upper hand corner? He said. It looks like a mistake. And one of his friends asked him what he meant. So Bates went. Very closely, pushing the right up to the red rubber, gold rubber around the case. Then he looked up behind him, see he had seen there was a reflection of someone, someone in black, standing on his shoulder. It looked like a man, he said. Standing, but I couldn't see the face. It's gone now. It was all go- that it was all. Go on, Sanders said. You're itching to tell me it was a reaper. I believe that it was a common explanation. It isn't the occasional crucifixion. I see the reaper image in the glass. Get it out of your system, man. National Choir would love it. Tell me about the horrific St. Consequences and fiery to explain it. Was he later hit by a car? Did he jump out of a window? What? Oh, Mr. Chocolate Cartel chuckled a forlorn little chuckle. You should know better, Spangle. Have you told me twice that you are conversed with the history of the Great of the Glass? There's no horrific consequences. You never have been. That's why the day of glass isn't Sunday supplement like the core of Mira, diamond of the or, or curse of the kingdom dust too. So I'm mundane compared to those. You think I'm a fool, don't you? Yes, Swanson said. Can we go go up now? Certainly, Mr. Crowglin said passionately. He climbed the ladder and pushed the trap door. There's a clickly clump, clickly bump as it was drawn up into the shadows of the counterweight. Then, Mr. Catlin disappeared into the shadows. Spangler followed. The blind and others stared, knowing, unknowing after them. The gable room was explosively hot, lit only by one cup of Webley, very multi-angled window, but filtered the hard outside of the red light into a dirty, milky glow. The looking glass was propped at, the, at an angle to the light, catching most of it and reflecting a pearly patch into the far wall. It was not bolted securely into a wooden. It been bolted securely into a wooden frame. Mr. Catley was not looking at it. Quite sturdy, he's not looking at it. Yeah, but you haven't even put a dust cast over it, Bengal said, visibly angered for the first time. I think of it as an eye, Mr. Cutlin said. His voice was still drained, perfectly empty. If I left it open, always open, perhaps I'll go blind. I'll go blind. Banger paid no attention. He took it off his jacket, folded the buttons carefully in, and with infinite gentleness he wiped the dust from the complex surface of the glass itself. He stood back and looked at it. It was genuine. There was no doubt of it. He never had been, really. It's a perfect example of Denver's greatest genius. The cluttered room reminded him of his own reflection. Cutler's half-turned turned figure. They were all clear, sharp, almost three-dimensional. The fat, faint magnifying effect of the glass gave everything a slightly curved effect that added an almost fourth-dimensional distortion. It was as if his fault broke off. He felt some, another wave of anger. Catelyn? Catelyn said nothing. Catelyn? Careful. I thought you said the girl didn't uh, harm the mirror. No answer. Spangler stared at it. I see. At the mint glass. There's a piece of fraction tape in the upper cut in the hand corner. Did she crack it? The girl's tape man, speak up. You're seeing the reaper, Crowley said. His voice was deadly about passion. There's no fraction tape on the mirror. Put your hand over it. Dear God. Spangler wrapped the paper's upper sleeve of his coat carefully around around his hand reached out and pressed it gently against the mirror you see nothing supernatural it's gone oh man it covers it covers it can you feel the, the tape 
Why don't you pull it off? Spangler took his hand away carefully and looked into the glass. Everything seemed a little more distorted. A room odd the room's odd angles seemed to be yawn. You're crazily as this verge is sliding off. Into some on film scene entity. There was no dark spot in the mirror. It was flawless. He felt his sunny unhealthy dead dread rise in him and despised him for feeling it. It it looked like him, doesn't it? Miss Catelyn asked. His face was very pale and he was almost directly looking directly at the floor. A muscle twitch spanned him mugly in his neck. A minute spanned him. It looked like a haunted figure standing before you, doesn't it? If it took it, it looked like a friction teeth masking and a soft crack. Spangler said very firmly, nothing was nothing more, nothing less. Bates boy is a very husky. Catelyn said rapidly, though his words seemed to drop into the hot still atmosphere, like stones into the dark water. Like a football player, he was wearing a leather sweater, dark green chindos, his half by the upper half exhibits when the heat is making me feel ill, Spangler said a little uneasily, steadily. He had taken out a, a handkerchief and wiping his neck. His eyes searched the convex surface of the window in small, turkey moments. When he wa- said he wanted to drink water, drink water for God's sake, Catelyn turned and stared wildly at Spangler. How was I to know? How did I know what was to know? Is it a laboratory? I think I'm going to... He sweater. I just caught a glimpse of his sweater along down the, the stairs. Then he be sick. Catelyn took his shook his hand. It was a, as if to clear it and looked to the floor again. Of course, floor door on your left, second door to your tools. Says, you know, Catelyn shook his head as it was clear. He looked at the floor again. Of course, third door on the left, second floor. You know the stair towards the stairs. He looked up appealing. How was I to know? But to know. The bang was already stepped down onto the ladder. He walked under his weight. Then, for a moment, Catelyn thought, hoped that he fall. He didn't. Through the open square in the floor, Catelyn watched him descend, holding his mouth lightly with one fair hand. Spangler. But he was gone. Catelyn listened for his footfalls, fade to echoes, then died away. When we, then, when they were, he shivered violently. He turned to move his own feet into the trap door, but it was frozen. Just that last hurried glimpse of the body of his sweater. God, it was as if a huge invisible hands were pulling his head, forcing it up. But not wanting to look, Clatlin stared into the glimmering depths of the liver, the liver looking glass. There was nothing there. The room was reflected back at him, his faith, faithfully. His, dust, his dusty confines transmuted to the glimmering infinity. A snatch of half remembered Tennyson poem occurred to him, and, mut- mut- and he muttered it aloud. I am half sick of shadows, said a woman of Shalat. A shower, see. The room was reflected back at him, to him faithfully. His dusty confined transmit, transmitted into glimmering infinity. A snatch of half remembered tenses by him occurred to him and muttered it aloud. I am half sick of shadows, said the lady of Shadat. And still he could not look around, and breathing stillness held him. From one corner to the other mirror, both feet and buffalo appeared at him with flat, obscene eyes. A boy wanted to drink water, and a fountain was in the first floor lobby. He had gone downstairs and never came back, ever. Anyway, like the Duchess who had passed, 
paused over brimming for the glass of a salty. I decided to go back in the sick room for her bells. Like Rubber who had gone to the carriage room and left behind his only only an empty carriage, two closed mouthed horses. The Denver class had been in New York from eighteen ninety seven to nineteen twenty and been but had been there when John Carter cat in Captain stared as if hypnotized in the shallow depths of the mirror. Below the blind eyed Adonis just kept watch. He waited for Spangler just like the Bates family might have waited for their son, and like the Duchess and Puzzle must have waited for his wife to turn from the city room. He stared into the mirror and waited and waited and waited. <laughs>